Alrighty boys, what do you think here? Got a little bit of a different look. Ended up get, picking up this little lathe stand. It's actually kind of cool. It's not as top heavy as it looks. It's actually pretty stable. So that should work out pretty nice. It gets it off of the workbench and the metal shavings. If they do fall off, they go right to the floor and I can just sweep them up. So that'll be nice. Plan on using this as just the welding area here. One day I'd like to pick up a better welding table, but that'll work for now. And it seems like I got a lot of room in here now, just kind of getting rid of a lot of stuff. So I don't have anything against this wall. I don't have this rack or anything that was here. So that really opens up a lot. I'm probably gonna put my toolbox right there. So I'll start getting back to some regular videos. Today I'm gonna be working on the truck a little bit. Gonna be adding a few sensors and hooking it up through this CAN bus I.O. module here. So Matt Happel sent me a hand. So this is the Boostmart I.O. module. This goes to the Holly Terminator and it adds extra inputs and outputs. And Matt sent me a pre-wired harness that goes to the CAN bus module and it has flex, alternator, dial -a boost input, and two sensor inputs, and it also has four outputs. One, two, three, four different outputs. I picked up a CAN splitter because I'm gonna have to split it off of here to go to my uh, three and a half inch dash. I also picked up the low dollar motorsports combo sensor that is for coolant pressure and temp. I might not use the temp on this one or just hook it up as a reference but I think I'm going to keep the factory sensor and then put this in the passenger side head. We'll see what I end up doing with that. And then I also picked up the low dollar EMAP can. So this is actually a back pressure canister that reduces the pulses coming out of the exhaust. So this is all filled with like a wire mesh and it has a little brass fitting and stuff in there. Comes with a bracket, a weld-in bung, and then two eighth inch NPT fittings and this stainless rod right here. I don't think I'm gonna have to use this, but I did pick this up from Low Dollar also. And Matt threw in a shirt, so that's pretty cool. So this little board is just a little circuit board, heat trunk. And my understanding is that this is still in the kind of the early phases of testing, and there's been multiple revisions. This is a recent revision that was just done, so I'm gonna test it out and see how it works. So let's get going on that stuff. I don't have a flex sensor on the car now, so I'm gonna have to install the flex sensor in the rear line, hook up the coolant combo sensor, figure out where I want to do the back pressure sensor and I might end up pulling the exhaust manifold off and welding it onto that or something. I got to figure all that out yet so let's get to it. Alright so here's this harness all laid out. I got the flex over here and it's got a lot of length. Alternator, got the two three wire pressure sensor inputs and then the dial -a boost there. This is actually the knob for the dial -a boost and then this plugs into Canboy and then we got four other outputs. This thing will also do flex temp without an additional input, so it will give you your flex temperature, which is kind of interesting. And Matt makes these harnesses. This is kind of like the 4 to 1 or 6 to 1 that he makes. Uh, this is neither of those. This was just made separately for this, but pretty cool little unit to get everything hooked up. Just plug it in. Alright, it's got a little bit done. I changed the alternator wiring for the can harness. I have the low dollar two in one there. It actually didn't fit with my manifold on the passenger side on the back. Uh, so I moved it over to here and then when I was going to loosen the coolant temp sensor on this side I broke it. So that kind of made my decision for actually using the two in one the way it's supposed to be. So I have the temp sensor wiring going back, alternator wiring going back. I have the flex wiring coming through under here. Just hanging out there right now. And I did unhook the old alternator harness. You can see I got that here. I just kind of taped it off to the side. I still have this one connected to my power tap and connected to my front wheel speed sensor. So I'm just going to leave those wires in there for now. So I brought the CAN box inside here. Here's all the wires that come out of it. I have the CAN Y splitter right here. This one is connected to the harness. This one goes down to the CAN box. And this one goes over to my dash. So right now I don't have anything else hooked up except for the alternator. So I don't have anything else hooked up, but I should be able to just test basic function, like make sure it turns on and charges the alternator. Then I'll probably hook up all the other stuff and just verify it one by one. So I'll key on, make sure it goes green. I got solid green. And you can see it charging 14 volts. So basic function, everything's working. It did start like shit because the coolant temp sensor's not hooked up. So you can see high error on the screen. 
it's not the correct cold start fueling, so it was a little rough on the start, but that's working for now. Next I'll go through and probably figure out the temp sensor wiring. I'm probably just gonna cut them and splice it in at the ECU, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm gonna start working on the back pressure stuff now. I got the exhaust housing off, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill and tap this section right here, so I wanted to completely remove it, and then I'll run the 90 coming off the back side of it like this. That way it'll come straight out towards the fender, and then I'll be able to mount the can over here. The kit did come with this stainless piece. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use this. I do have some copper, uh, and I might end up doing that so I can put like another little loop in it. But we'll see where we end up. Probably a little bit more. I wanna get it like flush on the back side here. It does have a few threads engaged though. Oh, two threads. I get more than that. All right, there it is. It's a little, little bit past flush, but that should be okay. All right, I think I got everything wired to the point where I want to test stuff now. I did go ahead and take this sensor, and then I actually split some of the wiring here and tied it into the holly harness. So that's all spliced in, and then heat shrink together here, and then the remaining three wires go back into the cab for the pressure sensor. Here's the back pressure can here. So it just comes off there, has a couple bends on it to give it some slack, and then comes straight over here, and that's the pressure sensor. So the harness that came was pre-wired for two sensors, so one I hooked up here, and then the other one I ended up splicing it in in the cab. I removed the plug off of it and then just tied it in. So I don't have the return line set up for the flex sensor yet, but I did plug one in on the floor just to verify that it's working. And then here I just tied these two wires together. This is for the pressure sensor, so the one that was pre-terminated, I just connected the wires coming back from the sensor. But if I wasn't using that combo sensor, I would have just been able to plug it right into the regular sensor. Do have the dial hooked up. I'm not going to use any outputs right now just for the test, so it's going to be all input. But I'll be able to calibrate the temp sensor, see if the back pressure sensor is working, coolant pressure. So the coolant pressure, back pressure, flex, and dial will all be on the CAN bus. And then I'll test the dial with my current output set up on the boost controller. Okay, so I got some time into this thing now. I spent some time configuring some stuff. So if you listen, I'll go three clicks here. Now my boost controller is working. I don't know if you can hear it actually in the video, but can you hear the frequency change? No, it's a hundred percent. All right, so that's working. And just to test it, I just uh, had this enabled above 50 degree coolant temp. I normally have it active like above one pound of boost, but just to test it, I did it that way. Go out here, it'll be a little easier to hear. So uh, that's all the way down. I'll go three clicks. That's 100%. So I basically have it set up to where like <clears throat> the first three clicks aren't doing anything and then third click is 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 85%, and then 100%. I picked 85 because I know uh, 85 on that setting is when I went 890 and that's 85% on the controller. So. 85 was when it went 890 and 88% was when it made 1000 on the dyno. So that's just kind of a reference point for me. So I'll start it up and run it a little bit and I'll let it warm up and then we can let, so I'll start it, run it a little bit, verify that it is actually building coolant pressure to check the sensor. It's kind of late, but I might give it a little throttle, see if the back pressure sensor's working, just double check that.
All right, so we'll check those logs out. I made a different log too of just using the dial boost. I can compare the input to the output. So we'll look at that. All right, not gonna screen record this, but I do have some data here. So you can see the blue line, that's coolant pressure, and it's just gradually increasing as it's warming up. So that means it's building pressure in the coolant passage. RPM line, this is gradually coming down because it's warming up. So here's the RPM line. You can see when I bring it up to get onto the two-step and then when it flatlines. So coolant pressure is increasing with RPM. So before it started rising, it was showing 14 PSI coolant pressure and then it actually came up to like 25, 27. So we'll have to watch that. No pressure out of the overflow. And there's like nothing really in there. That's the same amount of fluid it had in there before. So I'm not really too worried about that. I'm just going to use this to like get a baseline and see kind of where it's at. My yellow Mustang was at like 35 to 40 pounds like all the time. So like during a pass it was always pretty high. So I'll do some more runs and then get a baseline on this. And then the green line is the boost line. And then this little squiggly guy. This little squiggly guy down here is the back pressure. So back pressure is coming up. Two pounds of back pressure. It did spike up to eight right there. But I think that's where that pop was. But this is just to verify that it is all working. So yeah, all the Canva stuff is working. I'm gonna look at a different log here. So that blue line is the dial. It just clicked it up each time. Click, 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 click. And then here's the dial out. So here's the duty cycle going up each time with it. So the dial is working. Dial goes up, duty cycle goes up. So all that stuff's working. All the canvas stuff that I added is working. The flex is showing no data. I think, I'm thinking that's just because there's not fuel flowing through it. When I didn't have any fuel in it, it showed low error. So what I did here was put a little bit of fuel in a bucket just so it's submerged. And then when I put it in the bucket, it went to no data. When it was not submerged, it said low error, like it's unhooked. So that tells me that the flex is actually working. I just have to run the line and then that should be good. So to configure all these, it's similar to doing a normal input or output. Uh, but there's a couple things that you do different. So coolant pressure, I select CAN 5 volt, enable and then configure. And then all the configuration stuff is just like setting up a normal sensor. But the big difference is you go to CAN settings. And then that CAN number is always going to be 42. Uh, and then you can change the broadcast rate depending on what it is. Some are 1, some are a range of 1 to 100. The dial is supposed to be at 5. And it goes on CAN I.O. module. Then you select whatever input it is. And then CAN bus 1. So the instructions can be a little bit confusing because you have this input channels one, input channels two. So those are actually two of the wires for your input channels. So one of them I had the coolant pressure and then one of them I had the back pressure sensor. So it says input channels one, but your input is actually input four. Input channels two is actually input five. So don't think that input channels one is actually input one because input one is for dial a boost. Input two is for the flex sensor. Input 3 is for flex temp. Input channels 1 is input 4. So I just wanted to cover that because that's kind of confusing. So like my dial setting, if I go into CAN settings, it's on input 1 because dial is on input 1. But if I go into my back pressure, back pressure, CAN settings, it's actually on input 4. And then input 4 is wired to the channels 1 wire on the pigtail. So that is it for this one. We'll do one more shot of the garage. I did use the welding station today. I flipped the welders around because I wanted the other one on this side. So got that in, started getting some more stuff in, got the hoist in, got my toolbox in. So I'm slowly just as I'm working, bringing stuff back in. What I decided is I think I'm just gonna work in the garage for like a month and then whatever I don't bring back in here after a month, I'm just not gonna bring back in. Except for stuff that I know I'm gonna use like the snow blower and other stuff. but. That might be a good way to do it, just to keep the clutter out of it and really think about what I want to bring back in. Today is actually day seven now since we recoded it and it takes five to seven days to fully cure. So we should be at full cure now. 72 hours, it says it can handle pneumatic tires. And then five to seven days is really when the floor gets its chemical resistance properties. So five to seven days at the full cure, it has the chemical resistance. So isn't gonna deteriorate if I get oil on it or whatever. Put some balls on the bottom of the chair there just to slide that thing around. I really just don't wanna scratch it and mess it up. So we'll try to take care of this thing a little bit. I definitely like all the room that I have not having a bunch of junk in there like against this wall and there's just a lot of room to work on stuff. So, so next for this thing, I think I'm just gonna button up some of the can wiring cause that's a, kind of a mess right now. And then I'm going to actually 
set up the flex fuel, add the sensor. I usually don't use the flex fuel sensor. I usually just run E85 all the time, but I think I'm gonna actually do that on this truck. So that'll be next for this thing. And I can just kind of gradually work on that. Next thing I'm gonna be doing is trying to get some stuff going on this car. We have the transmission for it. This is the CD truck six speed out of the frontier. So that's gonna be going into ball wall. So stick around for that. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.